Hey guys, welcome back to Adventure Camping. Tactical Nut here. And today we got a, something that's a little bit different, but what I think to be really cool, and I think you're going to be really interested. And it's called the Okapi. So stay tuned. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get the specs out of the way so that we can dive into the history of this knife and why I think it's really cool and why I think you should get one. Um, first off, you have 3.9 inch blade made out of 1055 high carbon steel. Cherry wood handles making it 9 inches overall. Um, as you can see here, it is made in South Africa and it is called an okapi named after a particular animal that's in Africa. And this animal is a giraffe zebra kind of hybrid looking animal so just so you get an idea um, kind of a freaky looking little thing but kind of cool at the same time right <laughs> um, now this is what we call a ratchet back design which means you pull on this split ring and push forward with your thumb and as you hear and see it ratchets open and close um, now as you can see here it has these it's a, like almost like a little wheel, I guess you could say, that catches in here. Um, and so you got this little stainless steel in the back. And on the handle, these are supposed to be like two crescent moons and three stars. Um, so, well, even before I get started on that, no stainless steel liners. Didn't want to forget there, as you can see. Um, really lightweight. I mean, I think it's about 2.2 ounces, I would guess. If you want to know why I'm guessing that, stay tuned to the end because I got something a little interesting for you. Um, now, why did I get this? Why am I telling you about it? Well, I just love knives, right? Let's just start with that. I love knives of all kinds, of all makes and models, and ancestry, the whole nine yards. And I had bought a different knife a while back, and because of that knife, it led me to really wanting this one. Um, now I happen to get to know a guy on Instagram. His Instagram page is The Condor, and I'll put a link to it down below. Um, he had one of these that he actually put carbon fiber handle scales that, I mean, just made it look amazing. Um, and through talking to him, he taught me how to patina a blade. Uh, we talked more, and he goes to South Africa on a regular basis. So he, what he said was like, when I go, I'll get you one, because just so you know, there's a lot of copies and fakes out there. Uh, he wanted to make sure that I got a real one, so he brought me one back and then just sent it to me and didn't even charge me, guys. I mean, how awesome is that? Uh, now, he also is getting into custom knife making, uh, and so when he does, I'll let you know, put a link down to his stuff, because I'll go ahead and tell you right now, I saw a few of the knives that he made and designs that he's working on. Well, one completed knife, a few others that he's working on, and that dude has some talent, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you that. I can't wait for him to start because <laughs> I'm going to have to get me one of his. But these started around 1900, 1902, I believe it was, when they started making these in Germany for the German colonies that were down in Africa. Now, what I would equate this to is basically like the Apennel of France, but the Okapi of Africa, right? It was a very inexpensive, very durable way to make a knife, very reliable that could be used for many different things. Um, to me, I would say this is like a beefed up Apennel as far as the lockup goes and capabilities because of the blade length. Um, but people back then and, and still today will use them for everyday stuff, right? Good utility knife, good for farming. They use them out in the fields, processing game, food preparation. I mean, these are just the kind of jack of all trade kind of knives and they are very durable, right? Um, now, a little bit more of the history that I thought was really cool is that these have become very popular in places like Jamaica among street gangs. Uh, there's definitely a group called the Rude Boys that is really well known for carrying these. Um, and even another cool factor, Keith Richards was known to carry one of these for a really long time. Now, I don't know if he still does, but he was known to carry one after somebody gave him one in Jamaica. And so I mean, this really comes with a lot of history. Now, at this point, back in 1988, um, you know, Copy Tool Company, I think is the name of it, bought them out and are now making these solely in South Africa. Now, 
if you want to get one of these, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now, there's only one importer in the United States, and it's called CAS Iberia. Um, I only know of them because, and the guy's real name is Steve Condor. He goes by The Condor on Instagram. But he talked with them down at Blade Show and got to know them, and uh, that's when he found out they're the only ones importing them. Uh, so, if you want to get one, I'm going to put a link down in the description below. Only use that link because there's a lot of copies and they copy them in a lot of different ways and unless you've had an original in hand you're not going to know what to look for um, and they're going to sell them for much more than they're actually worth now this one on CAS Iberia's website was like $14.99 uh, they have eight different models two including machete or six including two machete so eight models total overall uh, they have a couple of slip joints and several ratchet backs, and I'm really wanting to try some of these other ones. I mean, this has been a really cool knife to have. Um, I highly recommend it. It's, I mean, they're just a lot of fun. And there's even a way to pinch flick these shut, and I'm going to not show you that right now. <laughs> I've been working on it, and I haven't been able to do it, So, uh, but I've seen a couple guys on YouTube that could do it. That guy, Steve, he could also do it. Um, yeah, I'm not embarrassing myself like that. Okay, guys, like I said, I will put the link to CAS Iberia in the uh, description below. Right now, they are um, out of stock on everything Okapi, uh, but I've contacted them. I'm waiting to hear back. When I get a response, I'll put it in the description box below, and hopefully they'll let me know soon when they get the stuff back in stock. But literally, I think it's like $11 to $15 are the max prices. So, very inexpensive, very good, strong, durable knife. You won't care if you lose it or damage it, you know, because obviously that's pretty inexpensive. So, um, hopefully this will help you in your purchasing decisions. And if you stay tuned, I'm going to bring you a little surprise. But in the meantime, be prepared and have fun. Okay, so if you ever known anybody that they get really angry at different knife companies if they copy a knife design, I've met a few people like that and I've seen a lot of them online. But, have you ever thought maybe your favorite knife company has ever done it? Would you ever not buy stuff from them again if they did do it? And if you notice in a lot of my videos, you will hear me say, especially during the Ganzo reviews, a lot of people will comment that they wouldn't buy Ganzo because they've ripped off uh, a design of another company. And I've responded and said in many videos that almost everybody copies somebody else in some way, shape, or form. Because at this point in life, right, there's been so many knives and so many designs come up with, it's hard to be completely original. But, you know, there's a lot of people that still feel that way. Well, how do you feel about Cold Steel? You think they'd ever copy anybody? Maybe, maybe not. Well, I'm just going to say they did, right? This is the Cold Steel Kudu made in China right out of a Zyx handle material but the kudu is just a different animal in Africa um, and they put a, a likeness of it onto the handle so if we put the two together you got a copy of an Okapi right only very slight changes this is like a 4.1 inch blade it's 10 inches overall um, 2.4 ounces, which is why I think this one's a little bit lighter because this one is a little bit bigger. I mean the blade is Slightly wider. I mean and just slightly, but it is a little bit longer, but it functions exactly the same Same ratchet back design and Cold steel now I think their minimum lockup strength that they have to have is hundred pounds So I do believe that this one is probably a little stronger than this one I've not done a torture test on that to find out because, well, for one, this was a gift and I'm going to keep it forever. You know, just because this dude gave it to me, I think that is just extremely cool. And I just want to get maybe a couple other your copies and we can put them to the test. But that's not even really the point. The point is that I'm not even sure if they copied or licensed the design to do this. If they did, awesome. If not, awesome. Doesn't affect me or my life, right? But. You know, some people are just dead set on, oh, I'd never do that because, you know, this company wouldn't do it. But, I mean, they're both great knives. This just happened to be 4116 Krupp. So a German still, very stain resistant. I mean, this is a good knife too, don't get me wrong. 
I would say this one is more comfortable and feels better in hand than this one. Just personal preference for me. But, and I like this one better because it's the original and it has so much history and so uh, much behind it, you know, that to me just makes it a little bit cooler. But, I mean, this ain't bad. I'm not going to say it ain't. And they're both really inexpensive. Like I said, on that one site, they're 15 bucks. This one, sometimes you can get for five or six online. I'll put links to it down below as well if you want to get one of these to play out with. Um, if you pay any more than 10 to 12, you've definitely paid one, way too much for one of these because Cold Steel, I think, sells them at 10, and that's on their site. So you definitely got to be able to get them cheaper everywhere else. I think I even saw them for like five bucks today or yesterday on Amazon. Anyway, just thought I would throw a little bonus in there for you. You'll get a little two for one today. So you're looking at the Cold Steel Kudu but more importantly, the killer Okapi. And I love it. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed it. In the meantime, be prepared, have fun, buy Okapi. You won't regret it.